All right, you guys, I'm going to be showing you what a shotgun shell looks like from the inside, basically. Um, I'm going to be using a Top Gun, Federal Top Gun, um, seven and a half shot, um, two and three quarter inch, one and one eight ounce shot, for example. But uh, the basic parts of your gun that you have is you have your actual shell, you have your primer, which is uh, what is struck and causes the ignition, you have your gunpowder, which is normally right in there, you have your uh, wad, which is the piece of plastic that holds your shot together and uh, holds it as it exits the chamber, uh, and then you have your actual shot. Uh, and you'll be able to see all of this in a minute once I cut this round open, but uh, be very careful hen handling the live round. Um, you can, in fact, spark it, and a lot of people would argue that this is a bad idea. Um, you can spark the gunpowder. However, um, <clears throat> it has been proven many times that a, a gunpowder will not, that a shot will not go off unless it's in a pressurized uh, chamber. Um, and you guys can feel free to argue with me over that in the comments as much as you'd like. But, uh, Basically, when you're opening up a shell, what you want to do is you want to open up the crimping on the end. You want to have something small, not necessarily sharp, something that has a fine point, though, such as this little knife. And um, you can go ahead and undo the crimping. And uh, I actually do not have anything to hold this uh, these rounds in. Give me just one second, you guys. There we go. i got a little children's shovel right here, so... Once the end is open, you should be able to pour out your rounds, granted they're small enough to go out of that hole. And uh, you should have a couple hundred rounds if it's multi-purpose shot, such as this. Um, these are lead rounds, so you want to be aware of that when you are handling the rounds. Um, you do not want to risk getting lead poisoning, or you don't want to leave them around where a pet or a child might ac accidentally consume one of them. Um, so if you are opening up rounds, make sure you keep your stuff in a safe place. Uh, that includes your primer, your gunpowder. Obviously, do not store both in the same location. Um, and anything of that sort. Um, once you do open it up, and I believe I'm going to have to cut this round open to get it out because it is uh, very well crimped. But once you do cut this round open, what you will see is... You will find the wad in there. Give me just one second. You want to be very careful doing this. You always want to cut away from your body. Do not have any body parts in the way of the blade. And once that is done, what you should be able to do is reach in there and pull out the wad. And the shell is insisting on being a pain. There we go. Okay, once you do that, you will have your wad right here, which is what holds all of your rounds. It's a little plastic piece. Uh, all the rounds are held inside of there, and when you do fire the round, the wad is propelled forward. Um, which point when it exits the round, usually the wad uh, catches air resistance, slows down while the shot continues forward. Um, I actually forgot one part of the, forgot to mention one part of the round, uh, and I cannot remember what it is called for the life of me, but here's the other part of the round, and this is, should I remember correctly, this is meant to hold the powder um, back and keep it separated um, however if you look inside of there um, the point of this is when the primer is struck if you see that that piece inside of there when the primer is struck it ignites the gunpowder which propels this piece forward um, which then strikes the primer uh, sorry the wad which shoots the rounds out of the barrel um, unless I'm mistaken that should be exactly what it is so now once you pull this piece out, which it should just be simple to pull out, 
sometimes it can be a little bit stuck because of how tightly packed these shells are. Okay, there you go. Once you get that out, you should you normally find a little bit of black powder caked to the round itself. And inside of your shell, you will find a decent amount of uh, black powder. Yeah, I cannot remember the grains of black powder that are in here at the moment, but there it is. And uh, let me get something to put this in. And please do not use my examples of using a little shovel and things of that sort to store your powder and shot because that's a very bad idea. Um, it's just... Unfortunately, I did not prepare before filming this video, and I just kind of did it spur of the moment. But uh, <clears throat> what you have here is, uh, once you empty this out, you should have quite a sizable amount of black powder. And there's normally a lot stuck in there as well. Now, if, if I remember correctly, this should be the smokeless black powder. Um, that they use in modern rounds. Once that is done, you should be able to cut the rest of your shell open. I'm just going to cut this one in half or, or cut this one close to the base for demonstration purposes. That way you can see what's in there. But you should be able to take the rest of the shell off like I will be doing in a minute. Basically once you do take this off you will find your primer inside of there which generally has a little piece of cardboard and uh, obviously the primer itself. There you go. And what you should see here is the primer. Um, you'll see the primer right there. It leads to a little spot right in the front. Um, when the primer is struck, that is ignited, which in turn ignites the black powder. Once the black powder is ignited, which the black powder is underneath here, it uh, propels this forward at a very high speed, which strikes the wad, pushes the rounds and the wad through the barrel um, at which point the, ra the wad is uh, basically falls, uh, normally within five feet it falls down without any real force um, and your shot continues forward. Uh, that's it. If you guys have any uh, thoughts, comments, anything of that sort, if you'd like to see something in specific, I have a couple guns that I work with including a Mossberg 500, a Maverick 88, a Smith & Wesson 45, a Ruger 30-06, and a 1939 Tula Mosin Nagant 9130. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good day. I hope you guys uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, let me know what you guys would like to see. Have a good one.